along with the episode 17 of that Raw Raw and Cades podcast. My name is Kelly, also known as Raw Raw and Cades. You can find me as that on Instagram and YouTube, occasionally Ravelry. Um, they're the main places that I am, that I am, that I'm on. I don't know. Anyway, this is a knitting and designing podcast from the northeast of England. Um, welcome and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. So lovely to have you back. And welcome if you are a new viewer. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Um, yeah, so this week um, we currently have a storm blow blowing through. Um, storm Dudley is here at the minute and it's really windy. We're on some weather warnings and everything. Um, so if you hear a lot of noises, that's what that is. That's Dudley out the back. Um, apparently once Dudley's finished, we're then getting Eunice. She's coming straight after. Uh, so that's, that's a whole load of fun. Um, I'm not sure what the rest of England is like for the storm. I think it's I think it's hitting just the not uh, the east coast and um, and blowing through. But it could. I'm not sure if it's just the northeast. Um. So yes, that's where we're at. Um, I'm gonna crack on. <laughs> I've recorded this podcast all the way through once already, only to realise that I hadn't pressed record on the camera because I'm I'm that clever so um yeah that's how my day's gone I hope yours is going a lot better <laughs> um Lenny who I introduced you to last week my little kitten is currently playing with a pipe cleaner just underneath the table so if you can hear like <coughs> as long along with the <laughs> sound effects yeah, that's what that is. What are you doing? Anyway, um, right, I'm going to have a slip of tea and I'll tell you what's going on. So, I have no finished objects this week. Um, I have been working on a secret project, which I did finish and is gone in the post, but I can't share any of that with you. So, I have no finished objects whatsoever. That project has taken up a lot of my time. So, I have actually ummed and ahed about whether to record today because um, I haven't got as much done as I would normally have to show you because of the secret project. Yeah, I haven't had as much I haven't had as much time to knit because I've had a secret project on. Um, so, but I do have some stuff to show you, so I will I will show you. Um, also, I've changed rooms again. I'm having so much trouble with lighting. I can't seem to win. Um, where I was sitting with the nice um, picture behind me, a lot of people commented on how nice the picture was. Um, if you watch my Vlogmas, you'll have seen my living room a few times and you can see I have a big bay window, but I get no light in there until the afternoon. All the light is in the back of the house, the kitchen and this little office area. Um, the light doesn't go into the living room until mid-afternoon and I can't record then because that's when the kids are home from school, my partner's around. So I only get the mornings to do it. And it was so dark in there that I was having to really lighten up the footage in editing and then it was going all pixelated and horrible. So I've decided to move back over here. But then I've noticed it's quite bright in here. <laughs> I'm hoping that door doesn't throw things out. But... I'm st I am struggling with finding a place where I can just sit and record for you. <laughs> but I'll figure it out. I'll see what this one's like this week. Um, this is where I originally started recording in front of this desk. So hopefully um, there wasn't a reason why I stopped because I don't remember other than it being really untidy on my desk and me being 
embarrassed about how untidy my desk is but i have sorted it believe it or not that is sorted this is things to show you so it is sorted <laughs> anyway um let's get on with whips so the first whip i'm going to show you is my dash and in the snow cardigan by jane burns um this is a sample knit for jane uh she designed dash and in the snow as a kids cardigan um and she's now upgraded it to adult so i'm knitting the adult version for her to be able to photograph so this isn't for me i'm not going to be wearing it you won't see me wearing it because it's it's much smaller than me um but um, this is where I've got. So I decided that I was doing the sleeves first so that I wasn't stuck on Sleeve Island. So we've got two sleeves done. I think I had one sleeve done last time you seen me. So we've got the two sleeves done and then I've got most of the body done. It's quite walled. So you can see that it's most of the body up to um i'm about to start where the dog stripe goes around so all i need to do now is the dog at the bottom um then the snow which is the end and then the button bands and that's it so i should have this done by like monday i should think um and get it sent off to jane i will photograph it before i send it but like i say you won't see me wearing it and you're also not going to see the embellish embellishments on it because jane's knitting those um so she's going to be knitting she's going to be knitting all the dog bits and bobs but i'm going to get her to send me a photo when it's done so i can pop it up so you can see but that is dashed in the snow it's going quite well it is knitted in king cole I want to say pure merino i don't have any labels around um but i want to say pure merino hang on i was wrong it is um king cole so it's king cole and it is the merino blend dk which is a super wash it is a hundred percent pure new wool it says um and this is the pale blue colorway i've got the brown for the dog so that's the walnut colorway and the white is just white um and i'm knitting it on my four mil which is a us6 um cheer goose the interchangeable i've just unfastened that i'm just tighten that back up then um, <laughs> this must have been getting loose so yeah that's where i'm at with that um like i say you're not gonna see me wearing it or anything but it's moving right the next thing i've been working on is 24 days socks by Potter and Bloom. I did mention, oh, I did mention that I was I expected to have one of these finished by the time you saw me next, but the other finished object took up too much time and that didn't happen. I haven't had a lot of knitting time on these. Um, hang on. I did get, I think last time you see me, I just almost finished the leg i had one or two repeats left to go so i'm now i finished the fort and i've finished the gusset and i'm on the foot The camera keeps moving a little bit it's because lenny is attacking the table leg and he keeps and the table proper wobbly it's like a little paint table that rowan uses um 
I don't have a big enough house for a dining table or anything like that so yeah sorry if it's so yes um 24 days sucks potter and blue right do you know when I knit lots and lots of socks and I'd, I've designed like a fair few last year and everything so I'm kind of like in a what's I don't know what the word is like it's built in of how I knit a sock I just start the leg and I go I always knit top top to toe cuff to toe top down what's usually called um And nine times out of ten, I do the slip stitch heel. So I could see from the photos in the pattern that it was a slip stitch heel. When I got to the heel, the wrong side was first and then the right side. And it completely threw me. And I don't know whether I've missed something in the pattern or it's just a different way of doing the sock I've never come across that before but I also wonder if I just wasn't really concentrating on the pattern because I've got a friend I also wonder if I wasn't really concentrating on the pattern because I'm used to knitting socks I wonder if that's if that had happened I'm not 100% um, I'm not blaming the pattern at all because it's it's a lovely lovely pattern it just threw me and then when I got to the heel turn that was also reversed and it was the wrong side first he's gonna knock all the things off get down you've been a nuisance you're gonna get stuck in that wire oh mate Yes, I'm not slagging the pattern off. The pattern is lovely. It's really, really lovely pattern. Um, I'm just, I'm confused how how you're suddenly at the wrong side. Um, so I've probably missed something uh, in my just blindly knitting way. So I've kind of knitted them in my way because I didn't know how to get back to the pattern, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I've done I'm totally blaming myself not Emma's pattern um so <laughs> what I did do is um I think think that Emma's um start of the round is down the center of the foot which is is a normal thing for socks a lot of socks that I knitted before I actually started knitting designing my own socks the start of round is down the middle of the foot I don't do that. I shift my start of round and there's a reason <laughs> and that's because um, I always make a ladder if I go down the centre of the foot. It doesn't matter how tight I pull that yarn across, I will at some point have a ladder. Even if it's not a consistent ladder, it will just ladder in parts, whether it's when I'm just distracted and not taking a lot of notice. I don't know. but with these ones because it's also colour changing and centre foot I was like I did try and the ladder was horrendous it was like a gaping wound it was just yeah so I shifted my start of round so originally obviously you've got to start around down the side so I kept it to that side so my jog was always down the same side so I'll show you. So you can see my jog consistently goes down this one side. And what I might, I might try and reverse the other sock so that the jog is down the other side. So I've got, um, I've got the jogs on the inside of my feet. Um, I'm not massively bothered about, about the jog, but what I am bothered about is I seem to be getting a lot of holes where I'm joining yarn. I don't know whether you could be able to see. So there's a fair few there. And then there's a couple further up as well. So 
So what I'm hoping is, when I've joined the new yarn and cut the new yarn, like to end it, I've been using the Weaving Stephen method to wind them in. Emma in the pattern recommends Weaving Stephen or the um, Very Pink Knits method. I've never seen the Very Pink Knits method, so I need to look that up. Um, I always used Weaving Stephen, probably before we decided to call it Weaving Stephen. I, I've always just wound in my ends that way. Um, so what I'm thinking is, those holes could be that just the colour needs a bit of a tug to tighten it up. And I'll also, I've got ends enough to be able to just sew them shut. But I'm hoping that my second one looks a little bit better because I've obviously faffed it a bit somehow. I'll show you the inside. The inside is super pretty. I think that could be a sock in itself. And then the ends. A lot of people who I've, I've spoke to about these socks have said, oh, they're so pretty, but the ends though. And it, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but they are weaved in. So I'm just gonna catch them. I'm not gonna be weaving and messing about. I'm just gonna catch them and hope for the best. Um, but it's such a pretty sock, I couldn't I couldn't resist. I don't like ends, but I couldn't resist. It's such a pretty sock. I did see on Emma's podcast, Emma Potter, who designed them, um, on her podcast, she did knit another pair um, where the main colour, mine is West Yorkshire Spinner's signature in Marshmallow. Um, she did it in like a blue. It was like a bordering on navy blue. Um, and then her her contrasting colour, she used like a variegated like pinky blue colour and it they were beautiful. So um and I think that would be much easier because you're not cutting yarn all the time, you've just got two yarns going and you could keep them going because they're so um close together. But yes, I do recommend, I just I don't know what I've done wrong. So when um, I get to the second one, I'm going to try and read the pattern a bit better and see if I can figure out why it, the heel flap starts on the wrong side. Because I just, I don't, I don't know what I did. <laughs> well, I do, I just knitted a sock. I just carried on the way I would normally knit it. But um, yeah, when I got to that bit, I was like, what? <laughs> I was really, really confused. So that's those. They are knitted on my um, Knit Pro Symphonies in a 2.25 mil, which I'm not 100% on what that is in US. I want to say a two, but I'm not 100%. I'll pop it up there. Um, the light seems to be getting a bit better now. It's not so bright here and dark here. So. That's those, so I reckon the next time I see you, I will definitely have one of them done. Right, and I've been working on one other thing. So, the um, last thing I've been knitting is a new sock design. So, I'm going to do like a little series of um, like designs from the start to finish, but I'll tell you a little, little bit about it here. I was reading a little um short story a good few weeks ago i can't even remember what it was um and the character the male character in it said most ardently and it reminded me of mr darcy when he says you must what does he say you must allow me to tell you how ardently i admire and love you to elizabeth bennett in pride and prejudice and I just it instantly in my head popped some pretty little socks. I don't know why. This is the life of me. <laughs> I get designs in the weirdest times. But so I decided that I wanted to make these little socks and call them most ardently. So um, 
I had won some yarn from Elizabeth Paul. Um, I think she's pronounced Paul. I'm not 100%, but I think that's how you would say that. Um, so I won some yarn from Elizabeth Paul a few weeks ago on Instagram, um, a few months ago, and it's called Winter Light, and it's in her sock base. So I'll show you that. And when I pictured these pretty little socks, that was the sort of colourway I had in mind. So this is, I'm only at the gusset, I've literally just got to the gusset. But this is how they're looking. So, there is a sock by Potter and Bloom that looks very similar and I got a little bit of a, oh no, but it's not the same. So I'm going to pop these on the sock blocker so you can see the pattern stretched out properly. Well, hers is like a kind of cable-y thing, I think. This is a small sock blocker. Okay. Not sure how well you can see that. So, we've got the twisted rib, which is a, it's not just one by one. And then it is twisted ribs going down and then these are eyelets um, that are twisted as well. So it needs a good block so you can see both sides of the eyelet. But I'll show you there. See how it's on both sides and it like travels down. So that is my new sock pattern. So like I say, I've literally just got to the gusset. Um, I'm absolutely loving them. Um, they do take a little while because there's no just plain knit rows. They're all, every row is patterned. Um, and it's almost like a rib, so they're going to be quite stretchy. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with them. I think they're so pretty and they're exactly what I pictured. In fact, they're prettier than what I pictured in my head. So. Um, I love them and I love the yarn so much so pretty so that is most ardently um, I am going to have them finished by the beginning of next week priority is the cardigan but then it'll be these um, and I'll get them into testing you can see the original sketch up there of those like that sort of thing so I'm gonna show I'm gonna do like um where I'm gonna do a video where it'll show you start to finish of me designing them and and the very end so if you like that sort of thing then that's coming soon um so I've got some acquisitions to show you and then one more thing so acquisitions I wasn't supposed to be buying anything but then Wool Warehouse had a sale on and couldn't I couldn't resist doing something so they had a sale on this drops cotton light and uh it was so cheap that I was able to get jumper quantities in for me in three different colours for £25 so I've got three jumpers worth of yarn here for £25. I couldn't, I couldn't resist that. The only thing is, it is a cotton, it's a DK, and it's 50% cotton, cotton and 50% polyester, which isn't something I would normally go for, but, um, but I just couldn't resist the price, and the colours were cute, and um, I will, there will be things that I'll be able to make 
in this. So, do they have the colour names on? No, so I'll, I'll write them on because I'm not sure what they are. But I ended up getting this one. Which is like a nice grape sort of colour. This one. Like a, I want to say a denim blue. It's kind of like a, I don't know what sort of blue that is. A nice blue. It's a nice blue. And this one. Which is like an olivey green. So I have, col I have jumper quantities in each colour. So whether I design in it, I'm not sure, or whether I just find something for me and start knitting some lighter jumpers to wear. I might do that, but yeah, all of that. Look at it all. £25. Crazy, crazy. That's about $30 in the US, I think. So yeah, crazy. And then the other thing I got... I really shouldn't have got. So I've watched Standard Dye Works podcast for a long time, not from the very beginning, but um, for a long time. And I've always loved Jude's yarn, and I've always wanted some of it. Um, but I've never, I've never got any. And then he made an announcement that he had some anti Valentine dyed up, and that it was in the new shop update, and that if you wanted it, you needed to be quick. <laughs> And I was like, I really liked his anti-Valentine colourway last year when it was Valentine's Day, but I didn't, I didn't get any. So I was like, I'm getting some of that. <laughs> so I did. I trepped myself and got some anti-Valentine from Stranded Dye Works. So I got it in Jude's um, Merino Nylon fingering weight um, because he does lots of different, uh, he does lots of different weights, uh, weights, he does lots of different bases, there's the word, bases, um, but I chose this base. So this is his Merino Nylon base and it's just, look at it. My favourite colour is purple, but when it comes to yarn, I'm not drawn to it, which is I find really strange. My favourite colour is kind of like this sort of plummy, you can't really tell there, like the plummy type of purple, probably more. These two here, as it's shown on the camera, they're my favourite colour. My favourite purples. Whenever I see it in yarn, I don't know. I'm just not drawn to purple in yarn. I'm drawn to blue. So, I mean, I'm obviously on that side of the colour wheel, aren't I, with the blues and the purples. Um, I don't go right into red, um, but I do. I do stick to that sort of side. I kind of edge towards greeny blues as well. I love teal. Um, that sort of thing but this I think because of its dark I mean that's so dark and brooding and I was just yeah I loved it so that's that I had to have it so I was naughty and got it so that was that that's it for acquisitions though I was trying to be good I have ordered a um, a secret what's it called from Skein and the Stitch, I ordered her um, mystery, mystery yarn club for this month, which is a Tethys colourway. I think that's right. Um, she's doing Greek gods. I'm rubbish, aren't I? I think she's doing Greek gods this 
month is Tethys, the February month, and I ordered it because the mood board was just like, Oof. like you have to have me, so I did. So, but that's not here yet. She's only just dyed it up. So I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know it's a tealy sort of greeny sort of pond colour. <laughs> Ponds can be pretty too. So the last thing I want to show you is a jumper that I knitted a while ago as a test knit. Um, you might be thinking, why do we never see you wear it then? So I wore it twice. And then it got caught up in other washing and went in the washing machine and felted. Now it didn't felt like it didn't shrink to doll size, but it felted too much to fit me anymore. So this, this is it. So this is my Adia, I think it's pronounced Adia. It's by Needy Cancel. I think that's how you say her name. I'm so sorry if I've got that wrong. Don't attack the jumper. It's had enough trauma without you grabbing its sleeves. Thank you. Um, I absolutely love the jumper. I'm going to put a picture of the original pattern up there from um, Needy's page. Um, and you can see that. But basically, I'll also put a picture of when I originally finished it. I can't remember what I knitted it in. Is it on here? Drops Flora. So I knitted it in Drops Flora, which is 65% wool and 35% alpaca. It's lovely. It's all fluffy in it and nice and everything. It has these amazing sleeves. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on and show you. Now, say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Hello. I'm Lenny. I'm a big trouble biker. Okay. Love you, Pop. Okay, so this is it. So we have this um, quite close up neckline, but I, I really like it. And it's just like a rolled neck. And then the front is like these, you can't see because of the felt in, but it's like eyelets and cables running down. The sleeves, I love them. She doesn't wear them like this in the pattern. She just has them down. But I made them this way because I really like that. I made them a bit longer and did them like that. Um, oh, mate. Go down. So, what else can you see? The cables run straight down into the rib. I don't know what you can see. They run straight down into the rib. And then the back has this <laughs> double line on it. I love it. I really love it. And I wore it twice and then it went in the wash by accident. Oh, it also has this around the sleeve. So I knitted this as a test knit. I did extend the length. Um, I can't remember if it's got short rows in the back to bring this down. But the reason I'm telling you is, part of me, it still kind of fits, but it's skin tight on me, like the sleeves especially. I've got to like really squeeze my arms into it. And it just doesn't look great anymore because it's got that felted look to it you know i mean you can see it a lot there on the camera it's lost all stitch definition it's just a felted lump and i'm gutted i was gutted this happened a long time ago um but i keep pulling it out and thinking oh well could i could i do something with it maybe if i re-block it it'll stretch back out i know it won't um so I'm thinking of re-knitting it because I love it and I have I have the pattern, I can't even get it off. I have the pattern because, oh, uh, why do I have the pattern? Because I tested it, that's why I have the pattern. So I'm thinking of doing it again. Ugh. I'll show you that back a bit better now. 
Yeah. So it has these like they're not ladders, they're like, um, I think they were pearls. Yeah, because that looks like knits on that side. I think it was like a alternate rib type thing. It's so pretty and it has this really big deep um, ribbon. I'm so annoyed. So Terry keeps telling me to gift it to somebody, but I just don't want to let it go. <laughs> Even though quite obviously doesn't fit me anymore. So yes, I just thought I would show you. Share the share the misery. And um I think I'm gonna knit it again. Not it's not in my make nine and I'm gonna prioritise those. But what I'm thinking is, if you remember I showed you the Debbie Bliss yarn from that my mum got me for Christmas. Um if I can't I haven't tried yet, but I did say about trying to make it work for the Rococo pullover in my make nine video. If I can't get it to work for that, which I really don't think I will, then I might work it double and knit another one of these instead. So, um, because this, it's such a beautiful top and it's such a shame. And I just, I wanted to tell you about it because it's not a very well known one either. And Needy Cancel is really, really good and deserves a bit more recognition because she's amazing. So, yeah, that's it. Um, it was kind of like designer of the week. <laughs> um, so I will see you in a fortnight. Um, I keep thinking maybe I should do weekly ones, but with all the secret knitting, I don't think I can, but I might try, but we'll have to see. So that is it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and Honestly, if, you, if you've enjoyed what you watched, please give it a like because that really helps to boost the video because they don't seem to be getting a lot of views these days. So please give it a little like and, um, and if you, if you want to see me again, then please subscribe. It would be really, really helpful um, and I do appreciate it so, so much. So thank you so much <laughs> and I'll see you in... Oh, and leave a comment too. Leave a comment. I love chatting with you guys. It's really... I love the community on YouTube. I didn't even know it existed until I started... Until I started a podcast. I didn't know the YouTube uh, community existed and it's such a lovely one and I really like chatting with you guys. So please leave a comment and, um, and let me know what you're up to and, um, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye!